Imagine you're in a world where the ordinary is extraordinary, where the mundane is peculiar. Welcome to the land of strange laws. These laws at times may baffle, bewilder, and leave you pondering on the peculiarities of societal norms. They are the unseen, the unspoken, the unheard of, standing in stark contrast to what we deem as commonplace. Now picture yourself stepping into a realm where the rules of the game are unlike anything you've encountered. It's a world where laws are not merely legal mandates, but a fascinating blend of the unique and the unusual. They are the unseen laws, lurking beneath the surface of the ordinary, waiting to be unveiled. Consider a place where the concept of reincarnation is regulated, where the number of pets you can own is not only limited, but also species-specific. Imagine a world where the very fabric of time, as we understand it, is legislated against. It sounds unthinkable, doesn't it? Yet, such is the allure of the strange laws we're about to explore. These laws may at first seem like figments of an overactive imagination, yet they are as real as the sun in the sky. They are the laws that govern everyday life, yet they are anything but everyday. As we delve deeper into this world, We'll uncover the truth behind these strange laws. We'll explore their origins, their implications, and their impacts on the lives of those they govern. We'll delve into the peculiar, the extraordinary, the downright bizarre. These are not just laws, they are stories waiting to be told. Tales of a world where the ordinary is extraordinary, where the mundane is peculiar. They are the unseen laws of a land that never ceases to amaze, to bewilder, to entertain. Prepare to traverse the path of the peculiar as we delve into the strange laws of China. In this world, even the cycle of life and death is governed by law. Quite an intriguing concept, isn't it? If you're a Buddhist monk in China, this isn't just a concept, it's a reality. In an unusual twist of regulations, these monks have to seek official permission to reincarnate. Yes, you heard it right, a permit to reincarnate. This law traces its roots back to the Qing dynasty, aimed at controlling the recognition of tulkus, reincarnated Buddhist masters. It's not just an administrative formality, but a deeply entrenched part of their cultural and religious fabric. The Chinese government maintains this regulation, asserting control over the religious affairs and reincarnation lineage. In the grand scheme of life, death, and what may lie beyond, it's quite a peculiar regulation, isn't it? Imagine needing a permit for your next life. To reincarnate or not to reincarnate, that is the question. With a permit, of course. Imagine a world where your furry best friend needs a license to exist. It might sound like a dystopian novel plot, but it's a reality for the citizens of Beijing. In this city, a law restricts households to a single dog, and it's not just any breed that's allowed. The regulation you see meticulously lists the permissible breeds, excluding those deemed too large or too aggressive. So why such a law? The reasoning is twofold. Firstly, it's to manage the escalating urban pet population, keeping the city streets free from stray dogs. Secondly, it's to maintain public safety, minimizing the instances of dog attacks. This law, while it may seem restrictive, aims to balance the love for pets with the practicalities of urban living. It's a tricky equation, but one that the city of Beijing has chosen to solve in this particular way. In this world, man's best friend comes with a license. In this world, even the idiot box isn't spared. Consider this, you're engrossed in a riveting television drama. The plot is thickening, suspense is building, and then a commercial break. Not the most appealing prospect, is it? But in China, this scenario is practically a non-issue, thanks to a unique regulation that restricts television commercials during dramatic programming. Why such a law, you may ask? Well, it's all about maintaining the continuity and integrity of the narrative. Imagine you're following the story of a detective, hot on the trail of a notorious criminal. You're on the edge of your seat, your heart pounding with anticipation. Suddenly you're interrupted by a commercial urging you to buy the latest washing machine or a new brand of toothpaste. Quite a mood killer, isn't it? This law, implemented by the State Administration of Radio, Film and Television in China, is designed to keep viewers immersed in the story, free from the jarring intrusion of commercials. The goal to maintain the momentum and emotional intensity of the storyline without the abrupt shifts in tone and mood that commercials often cause. Of course, this doesn't mean commercials are completely banned. They're still allowed, but only at the beginning and end of each program, ensuring that the narrative flow of the drama isn't broken. This way, viewers can delve into the depth of the storyline without the fear of being yanked out of the narrative by a sudden commercial break. 
While this law might seem strange to some, it's rooted in the understanding that storytelling is an art, one that should be savoured without interruption. It's a testament to the respect for the viewer's experience and the acknowledgement that a good story deserves to be told uninterrupted. So, while you're watching your favourite television drama in China, rest assured that the story will unfold seamlessly without a commercial break shattering the narrative spell. Here, even your TV viewing is subject to interruption by law. Uh, time travel, a concept that fascinates many, but in this world, it's a no-go. In an intriguing twist of reality, films and television shows featuring time travel are in fact banned in China. Yes, you heard that right. The idea of hopping between different eras, changing the course of history, or even meeting your past or future self is forbidden on the silver screen. Why such a peculiar regulation, you might ask? Well, the reasons lie in a blend of cultural and political factors that are unique to the country. Chinese culture and history are deeply rooted in respect for the past. It's a value system that places an emphasis on the lessons learned from forebears and the wisdom acquired over centuries. Time travel narratives with their potential to rewrite history and disrupt the sacred timeline can be seen as disrespectful and even subversive. From a political perspective, the ban on time travel content is a part of the government's broader efforts to control the narrative. This control extends not only to the present and the future, but also to the past. By regulating depictions of history, the authorities aim to maintain a consistent national story, one that aligns with the current political ideology. Let's take a moment to imagine the implications of this ban. A world without Marty McFly's DeLorean adventures, without Bill and Ted's excellent journey, without the Doctor's TARDIS zipping across time and space. A world where the past is set in stone and the future is an untouchable frontier. To some, this might seem like an insignificant restriction. After all, time travel is a fantasy, a fiction of our imagination. But for filmmakers and audiences, it's a limitation on creative freedom, a barrier to exploring the infinite possibilities of storytelling. So the next time you're caught up in a time-bending storyline, spare a thought for those who can't share the experience. Because in this world, time waits for no man, and no man can manipulate time. From reincarnation regulations to time travel bans, we've journeyed through a whirlwind of peculiarities. Our expedition into the fascinating world of China's unusual laws has certainly taken us through some truly unique landscapes. As we have seen, these laws aren't just random statutes plucked out of thin air, they are deeply rooted in the culture, history and politics of this vast and complex nation. Let's revisit our journey, starting with the Reincarnation Regulation. This law, seemingly plucked from the pages of a fantasy novel, is deeply intertwined with China's relationship with Tibet and its spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama. It's a law that has more to do with control and politics than with spirituality or religion. Next, we have the one dog policy. On the surface, it might appear as a harsh restriction on pet lovers. However, when we delve deeper, we find that it's a response to the practical challenges of urbanization and population density. Then we explored the TV Time Out, an intriguing law that restricts the airing of commercials during dramas. This law reflects China's unique approach to consumerism and its desire to maintain the integrity of its cultural narratives. Lastly, we navigated the ban on time travel, a law that seemingly belongs in science fiction. This ban, however, is rooted in China's approach to historical representation, a testament to the reverence and respect with which the nation treats its past. These laws, peculiar as they may seem, are the threads that weave the intricate tapestry of Chinese society. They are the products of a culture that is at once ancient and modern, a culture that is constantly evolving while remaining deeply rooted in its history. As we part ways, I leave you to ponder on these peculiarities. Remember, in the world of strange laws, the mundane is extraordinary, the ordinary is peculiar.